Hello and thank you for tuning in to the follow-up video to the one I shot this spring where again I'm looking at a couple different corn phases and how they fare given the environmental conditions they're subjected to. My name is Sasha McIntosh Hobson. I'm an agronomist working at UniAg Cooperative. I work in the Eau Saint Laurent region of Montevideo West here in southwestern Quebec. Today I'm in a Mazex test plot here in Ormstown and in fact we're located right next to the 10-acre corn maze, massive corn maze that's located right next to the Ormstown Fairgrounds. In the first video I shot, I was looking at the corn's nodal root system and how it fared given the conditions it was subjected to. And we went through a bit of a cooler, wetter spring However, a company with enough sunny days to have quite a decent plant establishment and early plant development. And in general, that nodal root system established itself fairly well throughout our region. Now, right after shooting that first video, we received some intense rainfall events throughout this region. And unfortunately, many fields simply weren't able to take those quantities of rain in those short periods of time. There's a certain rate at which rainfall can percolate through a given soil matrix quickly enough before it starts to oversaturate and pool. Now, this is not only dictated by the topography of the field or the tiling within that field, but it's also dictated by what plant biomass is present in that field at the time, what is the composition of that soil and what is the structure of that soil profile. Heavier textured soils or even soils that are slightly more compacted due to long-term field activity within that field or even short-term activity. For example, fields that were sown in wetter conditions, which many farms this spring were forced to do given the conditions uh, that we had this spring. So this leads to a field that is less able to take this quantity of rain and unfortunately pooling did happen in many fields throughout our region and of course swaths of plants were stunted in those pooled zones so we had fields that were initially quite even upon emergence turn into more wavy populations due to that stunting. Now luckily, since that end of spring period, we have returned to more clement and relatively stress-free environmental conditions that we had experienced at the start of the season, only of course with the added heat of summer. Which leads me to the second phase I wanted to go over in this video, which is flowering and early grain fill. Now this is a particularly important and critical period in the corn plant's development. Given the impact adverse environmental conditions can have on the final yield of the crop and the short time in which that phase takes place. Now in general the timing in which tassels come out and begin to shed their pollen and the subsequent emergence of the silks is quite well timed with our hybrids. However, stressful environmental conditions can impact this time-sensitive dance, as it were, between these two inflorescences, and can also impact these individual reproductive components. For example, it's estimated that a single day of severe drought stress in the middle of the silking period can result in almost a 10% loss of yield. That's one day. Three or four days of severe drought stress in the middle of silking, you're looking at a good 30% yield loss. These silks, which we know are sensitive to moisture stress, can dry up prior to receiving that pollen and prior to that male genetic material making its way to the female ovary awaiting it in that immature kernel. Also, hot and dry conditions can not only affect the quantity and timing of pollen shed from the anthers in the tassels, 
but they can also affect the viability of those individual pollen grains. Now, in normal favorable conditions, a single pollen grain can last up to 24 hours in terms of its viability. However, in a severe drought condition, or dry, hot conditions, you can see that viability drop down to only a couple hours. This is why the flowering period is such an important time to pay attention to the weather and field conditions that our cornfields are going through, especially given its timing in the heart of our hot summer. But it doesn't end there. Even successfully fertilized kernels can be aborted if the plant is going through adverse environmental conditions. Now this is more, it's most prominent in the blister phase, which is just after it's, those kernels have been fertilized, uh, but it can persist even through the milk and dough stage. Now of course it's not linear, it's most prominent in the blister phase, it can happen in the milk phase, and it's quite rare once it reaches that dough stage, it would really take severe stress to have kernels initiate that abortion at that period. But between that blister and milk up to dough stage, stressful environmental conditions can result in those successfully fertilized kernels being aborted. Now, in our general region, as I observed it throughout these early reproductive phases, the weather or environmental conditions were quite good. I mean, we got a steady diet of rain, you know, the humidity was there, the heat and sunshine was there, but moderate, nothing extreme. So conditions that were quite conducive to successful fertilization and successful early kernel and seed development. Now let's go take a representative sample from this test plot and see how it's looking and how it's fared so far. So here we have a sample of one of Mazex's most competitive hybrids here in our 3000 CHU zone. This is the MZ4040. It's a 2975 CHU corn. And as we can see here, it's well into the dense stage. And as expected, given the conditions we had during flowering and during those early reproductive phases we have pretty much a full kernel set here i mean there's some slight loss i would say mostly due to a little bit of insect damage at the tip here but it's pretty much filled out and in a state that you know we would all kind of hope for now as we know it's common to see kernels being aborted at the tip of our cobs because it's often the case that we'll have at some point during those phases some kind of stressful conditions that will result in the abortion of those kernels at the tip. Now we'll always see the kernels at the tip being lost because of course these are the last kernels to have silks uh, emerging from the husks they're the last kernels to be fertilized. So of course, they represent the smallest investment that the plant has made in terms of photosynthates being translocated to them at that period. Because of course, earlier on, these have already been fertilized earlier on and have already been invested in. And for fun, let's see how far along this cob has come along. It's looking like about halfway milk line here. Maybe not quite there yet, but it's getting to that halfway milk line stage. Now, to note, this test plot was seeded down a bit later than most fields, most regular fields in our region. So, in general, in a regular field, this would have been planted a little bit early and this would be a little bit further ahead, so definitely at the halfway milk line and moving on past. Now, when looking back retrospectively at these two 
rather large critical phases I was focusing on in these two videos, the corn plants were subjected to pretty favorable conditions this year. In general, of course. I mean, this is a blanket statement that can't be applied to every single farm, of course. But in general, in our regions, for those two critical phases, the conditions were quite good. These corn plants were spared severe environmental conditions, severe stresses during these critical phases. And this is an important reason, one of the important reasons. Of course, in agriculture, as we know, it's multifactorial, as always. But it's at least one important component as to why currently our corn potential is looking quite strong this year. Now, of course, I've been focusing more on abiotic stresses that these critical phases are subjected to. There are, of course, biotic stresses. There's pathogens, whether it be fungal, bacterial, viral. There's insect damage. As we know, that growing nuisance of the western bean cutworm in our region. So there's, of course, biotic stresses that are going to play into what kind of final yield we get from our fields this season. Hopefully when our grain corn is ready to be harvested, the autumn rains will ease up a bit for us and we'll be able to get into our fields and harvest in time for that final piece of the puzzle this year. So thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching and a special thank you to all the field crop producers I work with. Thank you for opening up your doors to me um, I learn from you guys each and every season, and I'm looking forward to continuing that process with you guys. Good luck this fall, and happy harvest.